This video is on chapter 11 in our text, Lewis Vaughn's Doing Ethics, and the topic is pornography and censorship. Uh, the central question that we will be discussing is whether it is morally permissible for the government to limit or prohibit the exposure of consenting adults to pornography. Now this question assumes a couple of things. Uh, first, that we are talking about uh, consenting adults and not child pornography. And secondly, uh, that this question of censorship is distinct from uh, the question of what constitutes pornography and questions of as to whether it is morally permissible to make, use, or distribute pornography. So our question focuses on the issue of censorship. So let's look at an operational definition of pornography. As it's outlined in our text, pornography is any image or text designed to uh, sexually excite or arouse. Pornography can be conveyed through a variety of media, uh, including photographs, movies, paintings, books, uh, live performances, and the internet. It also can cover a range of uh, subject matter, pretty much anything consenting adults can think of to do. Pornography is legal. Obscenity is not legal. So usually when pornography is the subject of a court case, it's on the grounds of obscenity. Uh, Obscenity is a legal term that was coined in the 1973 Supreme Court case um, Miller v. California, and this case established three criteria to determine obscenity, uh, whether an image or text uh, can be deemed obscene and therefore illegal. So first, the image or text must be seen as unwholesome by the average person. Secondly, the image or text uh, must depict sexual conduct in an offensive way. And finally, the entire work, and not just pieces of it, um, must lack serious artistic, political, literary, or scientific value. Uh, these three criteria together are known as the Miller test, and rarely, with the exception of child pornography, uh, does a court rule that pornographic material is obscene. Uh, the censorship debate hinges on uh, the conflict between personal freedom and the public good. And the argument for personal freedom usually invokes some form of Mill's harm principle, uh, that a person should be free to act uh, so long as they do not harm others. It's assumed uh, that personal liberty in this argument trumps the common good in most instances. Um, it's also assumed that individuals involved in making, using, or distributing pornography are exercising their personal liberties and are not causing harm to others. Um, and further, that they're exercising their liberties um, to take part in pornography, um, to make, use, or distribute it uh, of their own choosing. So in other words, they're not coerced into doing this. Um, in addition to not causing harm, there actually is an argument among some feminists that pornography is empowering for women. Um, Wendy McElroy, for example, who is in our text, uh, dismisses traditional feminist arguments that pornography uh, degrades or objectifies women, um, that it leads to violence against women, or that women are coerced into making pornography, um, or that women are so oppressed by the patriarchy that they can't make conscious choices for themselves. She takes uh, what she calls a pro-sex stance uh, by asserting that pornography benefits women by giving them a wider view of sex and sexuality and opening them to experiences that they might not otherwise have. Um, it encourages to uh, imagine and to live vicariously. Uh, she also claims that legitimizing pornography would give women an outlet to become financially independent. The arguments for censorship uh, run the gamut. Um, many opponents argue that pornography is immoral and that making or using it is immoral and leads to widespread negative behaviors, including promiscuity, unsafe sexual practices, um, and a weakening of the family structure. Because pornography has such negative effects on society, uh, opponents claim, uh, it should be banned. Uh, in this case, the common good would trump uh, personal liberties. Another argument in favor of censorship um, is put forth by proponents of legal paternalism, and that's the idea that government should restrict people's behavior because it knows better than they what is good for them. 
Others argue that uh, men become sexually aggressive toward women and children when they use pornography. Um, now the data that support this claim are far from conclusive. Uh, there have been a number of conflicting studies um, conducted in many countries and as yet there's no definitive direct correlation between men using pornography and violence against women. Um, in fact, the, the stand seems to be today um, that uh, pornography may affect some men who already have this tendency, much like gambling may impact someone who has an addictive behavior, um, but not impact the variety of other people involved in the activity. Um, so the studies seem to show that pornography will trigger violent behavior in men um, who already have a predisposition, um, but there's nothing to say that reducing uh, pornography, reducing exposure to pornography, or limiting or prohibiting pornography would in any way reduce violence against women and children. Uh, many feminists, as I mentioned before, do object that pornography objectifies and degrades women, um, puts them in dehumanizing positions, um, and makes them the victim of violent acts. And these themes um, that are prevalent in pornography convey the message to users um, that the dehumanizing treatment of women is socially acceptable, um, or further, that it shows how men are supposed to treat women. Um, so their concern is that women in pornography are not realistically portrayed. Um, these women are compliant, subservient, submissive, happy to be that way. Um, in short, happy to be victims. Um, and this relationship between men and women, with uh, men being dominant and aggressive and women being happily submissive, creates an unhealthy model that men try to recreate in the real world. So some of the most ardent feminists, like Catherine McKinnon, who's also in our text, assert that pornography in all forms must be banned, again, for the greater good. So a solution to our central question, um, which was to what extent, if at all, should the government limit uh, or prohibit the making use and distributing of pornography, is a very difficult one to resolve. Um, the idea of censorship is anathema to any open society. Um, and yet even the strongest proponents of pornography agree that there should be some limits, um, uh, some that protect children um, who should not be involved in pornography, um, and some limits to keep open spaces appropriate for all, meaning that uh, while pornography should be freely uh, available and uh, consumed, that this does not mean that public spaces be bombarded with pornographic images. So keep in mind as you're reading that the issue of censorship really does go beyond pornography and that censorship of pornography uh, can't be fully discussed without also addressing the moral questions that surround its creation, use, and distribution. So with that, uh, happy reading.